Welcome to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Emma Arnson, and today I'm joined by... Eric Aguilar. Issa Shake. Sam Sheridan. I'm Andy Knox. And I'm Caleb Hart. On our final episode of this season, we are covering a topic that is on a lot of people's minds. So let's see what the adults of Davis have to say about it. Uh, in light of recent state bills, what's your uh, opinion on abortion? Well, more so than anything, I'm interested to see what the Supreme Court does with it. <clears throat> Looks like the states that have banned it, not banned it, but heavily restricted it, are really looking for a way to make the Supreme Court reevaluate abortion law, which they haven't done in almost 50, 60 years now. And to see what they decide to do with current abortion law will be interesting. I trust their judgment. They're all really smart people up there, I hear. So you think that like, if abortion went to the Supreme Court, they'd make like a good decision that helps all Americans? I don't think that when you're dealing with an issue like abortion that's so controversial that you could get an opinion or a change in the law that satisfies everybody. But they're all definitely you know, very prudent legal scholars, every single one of them. And to see if they decide to change or maybe even not to change to uphold current law, uh, that'll probably have a really big impact on public opinion as it always does. And that might uh, settle the issue at least for another 50 years before we start debating it again. Um, I feel like it should go both ways. I feel like it should be a vote. Like, um, because some people try to find the easy way out with abortions, and I feel like some people, um, they have, like, they need the easy way out, basically. Like, if you're not doing good for yourself, then maybe you need to just have an abortion, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not too big on abortions, but I feel like the person that's carrying it should definitely be the one that control rather it should be a border or not, honestly. But then I understand why they don't have it like that because a lot of probably, a lot of abortions would be going on right now. So, um, I think that unless you're going to take care of the baby after it's born, then you might as well let them abort it because otherwise it's going to be in like foster care or somewhere with a bad parent. Or can we cuss on this? <laughs> with a bad parent. <laughs> Thank you guys. Awesome. I have a joke about that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think that abortion should be accessible and legal and heavily subsidized by the government. Um, even late-term abortions, but again, special circumstances, things like that. But uh, I agree, and I think that um, it's really wrong to trap women in circumstances that are beyond their control and sets up families and individuals for a lot of trauma. And that's not something that our society needs any more of. So, true. We need to heal. <laughs> um, personally, I'm not in favor of abortion. But if they, you know, if they're going to outlaw it, then they need to have uh, resources for for people that have babies that can't take care of them. So they need to they need to step forward in that in that a aspect of it. So you think the government should have like um, child support in place for people like who can't support a child but can't get an abortion? Yeah. Abortion needs to be safe and legal for all women. What do you think would happen if the government uh, banned abortion in these states? I think women will always get abortions. It's just going to depend on whether they're going to be legal and safe or if they're not. Uh, but that's what history tells us is when women don't want children, they find a way to get an abortion, and with sometimes tragic and lethal consequences. I mean, my, my opinion is, is if you take away abortion, what's actually going to happen is the number of uh, safe abortions is going to drop, while the number of abortions is going to drop very minimally. And what will actually happen is women dying. <laughs> I, I agree, yes. <laughs> so you think, like, the government should keep abortions? I think it needs to be protected, if only because it's dangerous to... I think it's actually dangerous to criminalize them. Criminalize it. For sure. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> well, it sounds like people had generally the same opinion on this. So what do you guys think about what they had to say? <laughs> well, you know, I feel like it makes a lot of sense that a lot of people would share the same opinion on this issue. I mean, we do live in Davis. I think 
Uh, one thing we, we kind of tend to do when we live in such a bubble of Davis is kind of like tend to homogenize these opinions of people in the United States. And I, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't really feel like it's, of course, it's not a representative sample. Um, but to the point of abortion, I'll just, I'll, yeah, I'll start out with one thing. Uh, I, I am very uh, unsure about my own stance on abortion. I feel like there are a lot of uh, good arguments on both sides. I feel like uh, one thing, um, kind of rhetorical device that's used uh, a lot in the abortion in the abortion debate is that um, uh, you know you shouldn't have like a bunch of male politicians be deciding what a woman can do with their body. I, I kind of disagree with that premise. Uh, polls show that women and men have a very similar, uh, like by percentage, opinions on abortion. Like it, your gender doesn't really affect your opinion on abortion. I feel like. Um, that shouldn't be, really be a factor. I feel like the main factor should just be, um, you know, do you think uh, that it's a life? Do you think, um, you know, that it is a life as worth protecting as a, as a human's life? I feel like that should be the main goal. And I feel like the abortion debate gets wrapped up in a lot of rhetoric. I absolutely agree with that statement about um, how, like, because you can just talk about this. This is a debate that can go on for hours and hours and hours um, about like different aspects of the abortion um, debate. But I, I personally think, um, for me, is that um, the, the the woman and the should be able to make the decision that she thinks is best for her, um, and but she should also. She should also be provided with all of the information necessary, so it shouldn't be held back. Anything like about like um, maybe like emotional trauma that this will cause, or like pain or confusion. Like like that shouldn't be um, that information shouldn't be held from the woman. Um, she should be given all sides and all aspects of like this procedure um, before she decides to go through with it. And then if she does, that's her choice, and that should be her. So, I mean, uh, like, at what point do you think uh, kind of the cutoff should be? Um, no, I don't really know too much about um, abortion, so I can say, like, exactly when I think the mm -hmm. cutoff should be. Do you have an opinion? No, I mean, it's something that I feel like uh, should be, you know, answered fairly scientifically. I, I feel like it should <laughs> generally be about brain development. You know, I definitely think, you know, uh, aborting a... a um, you know, a, a fetus that's like the moment after the sperm meets the egg isn't really functionally different from just deciding not to have a baby in the first place. Um, but I am, I think, when I think about my own life, I just think I'm really glad that I'm alive. Um, <laughs> and, and I feel like uh, it, is, it is good to give people the opportunity to live. Um, but I think a lot of times, I guess in abortion, really is the same as um, as just deciding not to have a kid at some earlier point. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, I don't know, it's a really difficult issue for me to form the stance on. I definitely, I agree. yeah, I definitely kind of disagree with like the premise of, uh, of that like the cutoff point is just when they, when they exit the woman's body. I feel like it should be more focused on the fetus uh, than the woman herself, at least in terms of like, when is the fetus a life? I think you touch on a great point, which is that um, we've seen these slogans, no, uh, my body, my choice, more mm -hmm. recently, no uterus, no opinion, um, that this is a part of the woman's body, which is really where the two sides of the debate are, are uh, at a rift, right? So some people will say that the fetus is a part of the woman's body. Others will say that according to biology, no, that's an individual person, that's its own body. Uh, and your rights don't include the right to end another life. Uh, and I think it's really compelling, um, not necessarily that I agree with it, but the fact that these bills, a lot of them uh, in states like Louisiana, are heartbeat bills. So you're really trying to see, you're really trying to find where this human life starts. Mm. Uh, and you're making the case that if its, beat, its heart is beating, that means it's a life, right? You're really defining what abortion is, which is ending a life, right? Whether you think that's all right or not, it's ending a life. Um, and I think uh, I'd just concur with sure. the whole thing about how um, no uterus, no opinion is a thing, right? Where men cannot make a stance on abortion. I think, I know it sounds weird because we are young men talking about abortion. <laughs> uh, but from where I come from, I think it's not, 
it, it's not within a woman's purview to say that I can murder, right? So it's um, it's the same thing as saying no. If you're not Burmese, you can't talk about the Rohingya crisis, right? Because this is something that a woman has the power to do if they go see an abortionist. Um, and uh, frankly, I think it's a moral evil. Okay. Yeah. So you like? Where would you you would like say you were pro life? Oh uh, yeah. So okay. does it does it? Would you say that it starts when the sperm meets the egg? Um. Like that's when it should be illegal to get an abortion? I don't think so. No. Um. Okay. I'm definitely. Uh. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded by the heartbeat argument. I think at this point none of that matters. I think as the pro life movement, we've been inc incrementalist for a while. When you have people who are allowed to abort at 23 weeks, where uh, we've just seen studies, there was an article in the New York Times about how babies born at 22, if they're given proper support, will live. Um, I think the fact that we, as a developed country, don't have a 20-week ban in this country is, um, it's frank, it's kind of crazy. Uh, because you do see premature births at that point, and you do see those babies living, uh, or those fetuses living, right, clump of cells living. Um, and I think at that point, I mean, definitely we should move from there. But I, I don't think conception is necessarily where you're going to talk about. Although the fact is that the entire genetic makeup of that child exactly. is uh, decided at conception. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's that's away from now. Caleb, how do you feel about it? Uh, would you agree when the about the heartbeat being the point where a human life starts? Do you actually like like? There's plenty of different. And I mean, all animals have heartbeats, right? But uh, is there something particular that defines when something, when a human life is actually worth keeping? Because I'd say that's probably the brain. The brain is what separates us from all mm -hmm. the other animals. And when the heartbeat shows up, the brain has not developed yet, almost at all, as far as I'm as far as I'm aware. So I feel like that's a bad measurement of when a life is suddenly important or a human life is suddenly important, because I wouldn't say it's a human life yet. I mean, th that, then you're saying that it's all right to kill senile people, right? Because their brains aren't functioning at a human, as at a normal level, and yet their heart is still beating, right? Well, I mean, if there's a, if there's, if I'm remembering correctly, if for for the brain uh, so undeveloped that it isn't functioning at all, as in like a, as in like a, a an undeveloped fetus, you can pull the plug on those, right? I as mean, as far as I'm, I was aware. With senile people, I don't yeah, know exactly. Not, not I just senile, senile is just a mild. I don't feel like it's an accurate um, equivalence between like someone with Alzheimer's versus uh, someone like a baby who's been in the womb for six weeks. I don't think, I mean, I mean let's be clear. obviously the, bl the brain development is not going to be anywhere near the same between those people. So let's um, be clear. And, 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 the, and people, senile people have tons of, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I, 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 well, I feel like they've already, they've had a long life and they, they have a lot of connections with people and I feel like um, you know some of what makes a person important is how is how um, meaningful they are to other people uh, maybe I shouldn't have brought that example in it's but um, at three weeks is when you start seeing hearts form uh, usually people don't even know they're pregnant at that it's point so, right yeah, so exactly. and so then uh, by the time that people have noticed the heartbeat which is around three weeks later on sometimes uh, six weeks is when you start seeing brain waves brain waves mm -hmm. uh, when you detect a pregnancy, most likely there will be brain waves because at six mm -hmm. weeks is usually around the time when people will start finding out they're pregnant, right? Yeah, I feel like there's also like another thing that we're not looking at um, right now, which is like if people are having like unprotected sex um, and there is like the option or opportunity for them to get pregnant, like what responsibility do they have to think before they act um, in the sense of like, oh, I'm making sure that I'm using like the right protection or something like that. Like I feel like that's something that people don't um, talk about as much as they should when they're doing in the abortion argument. Um. I think another aspect of that is what you're talking about is also sex education. A lot of times people won't properly understand how to use birth control in places where they teach absence only sex education. So I think that's another aspect of it. Those people who don't understand how to properly prevent a child, I think they aren't always necessarily equipped to have a child and give birth. I definitely yeah. think that uh, the people who are pro-life on the side uh, erring against abortion 
uh, tend not to be the people who think of a lot of uh, kind of alternatives, things that would prevent abortion that are not just direct outlaws. And I think that that's, that's definitely something that they should talk about more. Yeah, uh, sex education that is not absence only. And uh, open conversation between people too, I feel like is I think, key. I think culturally a lot of pro-life people do come from a religious standpoint where they do think that um, education like that in schools is just, uh, if not encouraging, normalizing. Uh, right what is it, premarital sex, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and that makes them uncomfortable, and I think that's right. understandable. Well, and, and I, I think not only does that make them uncomfortable, but I, I think generally uh, in Christianity, I'm not an expert on this, but generally, you know, the, the rules are the rules, and you're not supposed to participate in anything that's wrong. So if sex education is wrong, um, you know, then, then uh, I think according to Christianity, you should not practice it. Um, and you shouldn't try to make that calculation on your own. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're um, all very fortunate because we had really solid like sex education growing up in Davis. Um, and so, but I think that is something to speak on for like the rest of the country. Um, might not have had that same level of education that we have. And so, yeah, we're coming from a place of very much like Annie said in the beginning of a bubble where it's like there's a lot of people who have the same opinions, who have also had the same background. And so I think it's hard for us to really have fully formed opinions, especially since we haven't really gone out into the world yet um, and been able to speak with other people on this issue. Eric, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, um, I think the, during the, mom, like, the moment, like, the, I think the couple just trust each other. They don't really think about what they're doing, so they'll just decide not to have protection. But later on, they realize that like, their partner's pregnant, and they don't really know what to do. Unless, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. their first choice is like abortion, but like, you know? Yeah, I yeah. Know, like, and I, I've thought about this a lot. like people say like as a woman I don't think as a woman it really has like anything to do with my opinion but I think that it even still it should be the woman's choice to have that abortion even if I like wouldn't in this situation that she was in um, I think it still is like her choice I agree um, the question is like yeah. the, going back to that is like when um, in the yeah. pregnancy I definitely think it, it it would it would create a pretty unhealthy kind of power dynamic for like a husband to just be allowed to like veto his wife's decision to uh, have an abortion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us on our last episode of the season. This was a really insightful conversation, and I think that this is a conversation that will continue to go on, and it'll be interesting to see what happens in this discussion. Thank you for watching.